Or August 10th, 2023, 10:12 p.m. The air hung thick with the scent of ozone and something faintly metallic. Sweat trickled down my temple, blurring my vision as I crouched behind the rusted chassis of a car. The city, once a bustling metropolis, was now a graveyard of towering giants, their windows black, skeletal fingers reaching towards a bruised twilight sky. This wasn't planned. I'd intended a quick solo exploration, a chance to document the silent city before the demolition crews arrived. Now adrenaline pulsed in my veins, fear a cold hand twisting my gut. It had all started with the rumors, whispers about the silent city, a once thriving metropolis mysteriously abandoned overnight. Stories claimed a deadly gas leak, a mass exodus, even a government cover-up involving extraterrestrials. Naturally, the internet went wild. As a freelance photographer specializing in the eerie and abandoned, I couldn't resist the lure. The journey to the silent city wasn't easy. The road leading there was a desolate ribbon of cracked asphalt, swallowed by encroaching foliage. The closer I got, the heavier the silence became, a tangible weight pressing down on my ears. The city itself rose out of the wasteland like a forgotten dream. Skyscrapers, their glass facades reflecting the dying light, clawed at the sky. Streets, choked with debris and swallowed by weeds, snaked through the concrete jungle. My exploration started confidently enough. I documented the decay, peeling paint clinging to skeletal frames, wind-whipped debris collecting in deserted plazas. It was a photographer's feast, a visual testament to the transient nature of human ambition. Then came the sound, a low rhythmic hum that seemed to emanate from the very city itself. It vibrated through the concrete, a constant unsettling pulse. I dismissed it at first, attributing it to my overactive imagination. But the sound didn't leave. It followed me as I ventured deeper, weaving through the silent canyons of buildings. The shadows seemed to lengthen, the air grow colder. My flashlight beam flickered, casting grotesque shapes on the cracked pavement. And then, I saw them. Figures. Silhouetted against a dusty storefront window, they stood immobile. Gaunt, skeletal forms, their clothes hanging off them like ill-fitting shrouds. There were three, maybe four. As I watched, one of them turned, its head snapping at a grotesque angle, its empty eyes staring straight into mine. A scream tore from my throat the sound echoing through the deserted streets. I bolted, heart hammering against my ribs. The figures didn't move, but the hum intensified, a low, menacing growl that seemed to follow my every step. Panic fueled my flight. I sprinted through a maze of alleyways, leaping over fallen debris, my breath ragged in my throat. My flashlight flickered, threatening to die altogether. Then, a crash. A sound like a metallic limb scraping against concrete. My breath hitched, I was trapped. Ahead, the alleyway narrowed into a dead end, a towering wall of brick blocking my escape. I spun around, desperately searching for an alternative route. That's when I saw it. A ladder, rusted and precariously attached to the side of a building, leading upwards into the inky abyss of an open window. It was a desperate gamble, but it was my only option. With a shaking hand, I reached for the ladder. The cold metal felt slick with grime under my fingertips. Ignoring the tremor in my legs, I began to climb. The ladder groaned under my weight, threatening to snap. Below, the relentless hum echoed through the alleyway, accompanied by the sound of scraping metal. I climbed faster, my muscles burning, my grip slick with sweat. Just as my fingers reached the window frame, a hand, skeletal and cold, clamped down on my ankle. A strangled scream ripped from my throat. I kicked back with all my strength, the decaying grip giving way. I hauled myself through the window, tumbling onto the dusty floor of a deserted office. Adrenaline pumped through me, momentarily masking the throbbing pain in my ankle. Slamming the window shut, I scrambled across the room, searching for something, anything, to barricade it. My eyes landed on a heavy filing cabinet. With a grunt of exertion, I shoved it against the window, the metal scraping against the floor. Heart pounding, I sank down against the opposite wall, gasping for breath. 
The hum, muffled now, still vibrated through the floor. I strained my ears, listening for any other sound. Silence, except for the frantic hammering of my heart hammered a frantic tattoo against my ribs, each beat echoing in the vast emptiness of the room. The silence, broken only by that relentless vibration, stretched on, taut and heavy. Minutes bled into an eternity. My breath began to calm, the adrenaline slowly ebbing away, replaced by a bone-deep tiredness and a gnawing fear. I crept towards the window, the filing cabinet scraping against the floor with a bone-jarring screech. Through a crack in the wood, I peered outside. The figures were gone, the alleyway bathed in the eerie glow of the half-moon. Hesitantly, I pushed the cabinet aside, the sound echoing through the silent room. The alleyway remained empty. The only sign of movement was a stray piece of paper dancing in the wind. But the hum, though fainter, still pulsed through the air. My ankle throbbed in protest. I gingerly stepped onto it, wincing at the sharp pain that shot up my leg. I couldn't stay here. It might be safer out there, on the streets, than trapped on this floor with whatever lurked in the lower levels. Taking a deep breath, I stepped out onto the deserted street. The city stretched before me, a desolate landscape bathed in moonlight. The silence punctuated only by the hum and the occasional crack of a rusted signpost pressed down on me, suffocating. I limped forward, following the path of the alleyway, until it opened into a deserted avenue. The buildings here were taller, their shadows stretching long and menacing across the cracked pavement. The hum seemed to grow louder here, resonating through the canyons of concrete. A shiver crawled down my spine. The silence, once oppressive, now felt like a warning, a stark absence of sound that screamed of danger. As I rounded a corner, a glint of light caught my eye. A single storefront window, amidst the sea of darkened glass, glowed with a faint ethereal light. Curiosity gnawed at me, a flickering flame in the darkness of my fear. I limped towards it, drawn by the anomaly. The storefront was a dusty antique shop, its paint peeling, the sign above its entrance proclaiming it as, the past is present. The light emanated from within, casting a soft yellow glow against the grimy window pane. Hesitantly I approached. The glass door creaked open with a rusty groan, releasing a wave of stale air and a faint scent of mildew. The interior was shrouded in darkness, the only light coming from behind a dusty display case at the back of the shop. Curiosity, tinged with desperation, propelled me forward. I shuffled across the creaky floorboards, navigating around toppled furniture and broken curios. The hum seemed to intensify as I neared the glowing light. Reaching the display case, I peered through the dusty glass. Inside, a single object lay, a small metallic sphere humming with an ethereal light. It pulsed rhythmically, emanating the same low hum that had been plaguing me throughout the city. A feeling of dread washed over me. This sphere somehow felt connected to the figures in the alleyway, to the unsettling silence, to the very essence of this abandoned city. Suddenly, a voice, raspy and ancient, echoed from the back of the store. Seeking answers, wanderer. I spun around, heart pounding in my throat. A frail figure emerged from the shadows, shrouded in a tattered cloak. Its face was obscured by a hood, but I could sense the intensity of its gaze beneath. Who are you? I stammered, my voice barely a whisper. The figure moved closer, the hood falling back to reveal an ageless face, etched with a network of wrinkles. I am the Keeper, it rasped, gesturing towards the sphere. And this, my friend, is the heart of a forgotten past. A million questions swirled in my head, but before I could voice them, the figure spoke again. But answers come at a price, it said, its voice echoing in the silence. The silence that was now broken, not just by the hum of the sphere, but by the soft patter of approaching footsteps against the pavement outside. The blood drained from my face. The footsteps grew louder, echoing with a bone-chilling regularity. I glanced back at the window, a sliver of moonlight illuminating the first figure emerging from the shadows of the street. What price? I rasped, 
despair gnawing at my resolve. The keeper's ancient eyes glinted in the dim light. The truth is a heavy burden, it croaked, and sometimes silence is the only safe haven. Before I could decipher his cryptic words, the figures burst through the storefront door, their skeletal forms bathed in the sickly yellow light of the sphere. Panic seized me. I lunged for the display case, adrenaline masking the throbbing pain in my ankle. But as I reached for the sphere, the keeper spoke one final word. Remember? He rasped, his voice a chilling whisper. The past is never truly gone. The world fractured around me. The antique store, the figures, the keeper, all dissolved into a swirling vortex of light and sound. The last thing I registered was the sphere, pulsating with an ethereal glow, before darkness claimed me. I awoke with a gasp, the cold morning air biting at my exposed skin. I sat up, disoriented and confused. Around me a familiar sight unfolded. My cluttered apartment, the soft morning light filtering through the blinds, was it all a dream? A vivid nightmare fueled by my fascination with the abandoned city? My eyes darted to the corner of my desk. There, nestled amongst empty coffee cups and crumpled notes, sat a small metallic sphere. It lay dormant, devoid of its eerie hum. A cold shiver ran down my spine. Dream or reality? One thing was certain. The silent city had left its mark on me. The truth the keeper had warned, was a heavy burden. And as I stared at the sphere, a sliver of doubt gnawed at the edges of my mind. Was the silence outside my window truly peaceful, or was it merely an illusion? And what secrets did the heart of the forgotten past hold? Those were questions I might never have answers to. But one thing was clear. Some explorations were best left undisturbed. The silent city, with its secrets and its horrors, would remain a chilling echo in the back alleys of my memory.